Hi there, guys and gals. Um, got another uh, reading of the game strains. Today we're going to do the uh, typewriter blues, Cassidy Irish muffs, gray tumblers, white hawks, and the black hawks. All right, here we go with the typewriter blues. Okay, this is a private strain originated by Judge J. Ed Wilkins of San Antonio, Texas. By combining some of the best bloods of the country, they are strictly a local strain and have never been advertised. I doubt if the judge has ever sold a feather, but the fights, but he fights hundreds of them each year and seldom loses the odd fight. They come all shades of blue and Cocks running weights from five to six pounds. Well, there is a few people nowadays that advertise them. You probably didn't back then, but they're advertised now. So. All right, the Cassidy Irish Moss. This is an Irish strain and was brought to this country by Tom Adair in 1910. Adair died three years later, and all of his fall went to Mr. R. Cassidy of Sioux, Sioux City, Iowa. Mr. Cassidy says that he has bred and fought them since that time without any cross and that the cocks still run and wait from five to shakes. They are black reds and brown reds and carry a heavy muff. They are a high station fowl with big bone and low set spurs. Good ring, good ring generals and good cutters. They will both single hit and shuffle in a tight place. Yeah, there's a few muffs around. You know, a lot of these old lines carry the are in the modern stuff. So, all right, the great tumblers. The great tumblers were originated more than 20 years ago by William Bowling of Wallens Creek, Kentucky. They are composed of jungle, shawl, and Spanish blood, and are a great fighting fowl. Noted as hard hitters and shirt cutters, a very and very savage on a down cock, running weight from 412 to shakes. Yeah, that's another fine I have. You know, that's that's the thing, there's probably somewhere, but you know. Alright, the White Hawks. Originated by Everett. Perigo of Thompson, Missouri. They are the result of breeding a white dom cock over a pure white hen that was half red pile and half blue bone. They now come most all pure white and are medium station. Cocks are five to shakes. Yeah, I think uh, there was a guy uh, like uh, 10 years ago that had some, I you know, it's probably. 25 years ago now, but uh, he, he was advertising in the Gamecock magazine some of them, uh, White Hawks. Yeah. All right, the Black Hawks. This strain of blacks was originated by Everett Perigo of Thompson, Missouri, same guy as the White Hawks. By using a black Gordon cock over a hen that was half Hopkinson and half Bacon Warhorse. By close calling and careful selection and mating, the desired color and station have been established. And these fall have made a very fair pit record. An advertised strain of the same name is of different breeding. Yeah, so. You know what guys, I'm just going to read the next one. The next two, because this book is going to take a while, so I'll just go with that. All right, these are called the Boyce White Sox. This well-known strain was originated by G.W. Boyce of Salmanaca, New York, nearly 20 years ago. This strain was established from the blood of George Gilkerson, North Britain cock, bred by Gilkerson. This Cock was a typical white ackle and a great sire. Mr. Boyce bred this cock to a gull, Commodore and Claiborne hen. 
and cocks from each of the three matings proved to be exceptional pit birds. The white socks contain much of the blood of this cock and resemble very much the white hackles. Mr. Boyce is one of the oldest and most popular breeders of the present day. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, here's a strain you probably uh, never heard of. The Bushwhackers. All right. The Bushwhackers were originated by John Williams of Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. And Bloodlines, they are an old strain of blues imported by Bill Pugh of Jersey City and called Jersey Blues. Using on the above strain of Irish Dark Blues and later a Grimmie Cross, they come in color blue, blue grays, and occasionally a dark red. And once in a while a spangle. Cocks are very large, weighing from six to shake. They are very game. The strain was fought with great success for years by the Pullman boys of St. Louis and Mr. Williams is still winning his share with them at the present time. All right. Next will be the Swamp Foxes, the Dangerfoots, Thompson Whites, Troy Whitetails. All right. All right, guys. Try to get some more uh, reading in. Try to get through that so I can get on to the uh, legalities of owning game fowl. So, uh, what I wanted to talk to you about after this, give the tip of uh, uh, if you got scaly legs or whatever, you know, it's caused by a mite, they say. But it's, you know, when the chickens got scaly legs, they're, they're out, the, their legs, the scales on it kind of pop up and it's just really rough and nasty looking. And uh, what he uses is scarlet oil. What I do is I get a sponge, I wet it down, and then I put some of this on it. Not a lot, because when I was a kid, I used to, I was, you know, pretty dumb. I'd uh, just spray it on, and I mean, you'd waste quite a lot of it then. But if you wet down a sponge and then put this on there, you wipe it down on them, and then, you know, it'll, it'll make their leg look red. But, uh, it works. I mean, it works really good. So you can also use that Vet RX too. That will work good too for it. You know, so it helps. You know, you know, especially if you're at a, you know, going to a show or something, and you want to make them look good. It says it's flammable though, so be careful. Yeah. Well, I see why it's got all kinds of alcohol stuff in there. But it's got to kill them little buggers, so. But, uh. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to cut this out right now, and I'll talk to you later. So, uh, have a good one.